I ask that you make your questions brief and uh, save your comments uh, for another time. Who are your biggest supporters of this bill? It, it ain't the corporations, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, the people. This is an extremely populist uh, idea right now, and I've been trying like crazy to keep this a nonpartisan issue because it is a nonpartisan. This is just smart, good government, the Bank of North Dakota, because they work cooperatively together with the community banks. And the way that they do it is they enter into participation laws, other, you know, beyond just the um, um, central banking relationship. They, as peer lenders, Say you're a farmer uh, and you need five million dollars to keep afloat, um, to keep your farm, to get it through to harvest where then you collect all of your revenues. Uh, the farmer will need to get that line of credit from a community bank. Let's say the community bank either is uh, enabled through their charter to lend the full five million, maybe they only want to do two or three million. That community bank will go to the Bank of North Dakota will participate together to make sure that that farmer gets the five million dollars they need to survive. So the farmer's happy, the community bank's happy, and the Bank of North Dakota's happy because they're all making money and the farmer's getting the, the credit that they need. Um, as far as what um, the major objections are, the constitutional question, the access to capital, and the third, there's a third one, which is risk. So in any banking scenario, there's always risk. You, you just can't avoid that. Even if in our investments, there's a certain amount of risk and risk in our money. Sitting in Bank of America, we've all seen what the Bank of America's at risk right now. Although I'm sure that they'll get bailed out. So maybe that's uh, too big to, to fail concept. But most banks, well, bank, you're required to have a loan loss reserve. So it's very unlikely that all your loans are going to fail at one, any given time. Otherwise, we have no banks. Uh, what they do is, you know, it works statistically. You keep us a, uh, a prudent amount in loan loss reserves. But the second point is that it's backed by the full faith and credit of the state. So the bank really technically can't fail because it always has taxing authority to go back to raise the necessary funds to back it. Now, I'm not saying that that's a popular solution, and the fact that you have three statewide electeds to make sure that that doesn't happen because they want to get reelected. So they will follow, and the bank, the Washington Investment Trust will be required to follow prudent banking standards, uh, uh, and will be regularly audited or examined by the Department of Financial Institutions to make sure that they are following those standards. Hi, thank you, Representative, for coming to Port Townsend today. I know it's a really busy time for you. My name is Ruth Gordon. I'm the Jefferson County Clerk, and as a member of Waco, the treasurers are my colleagues. And I understand that my colleagues, the treasurers, are very nervous about this idea. I also would like to let people know them. Jim McIntyre, when he was a representative, was a very strong voice for state income tax. He's not, you know, necessarily the enemy. Um, so um, I'm wondering, I think it makes better legislation when everybody works their differences out. And I just would like you to articulate for me how, how you see working together with these folks who are responsible for not losing our public money, um, how you see this working for them. Right now, they're not don't seem to be that happy about this. So I just like to hear, the, the I know you're well aware of all, you know, all of this. So, so yeah, how can you address their concerns in this bill? Well, when we put the task force together, we tried to make sure there was broad representation. To make it, and and uh, task force member Lloyd Parra, who is the King County Assessor right now, mm -hmm. but in past lives, he had been a King County Auditor and Seattle City Treasurer for many years, back in the day, back in the 80s, I guess it was. Uh -huh. And as the City of Seattle Treasurer, he won a national award as the best treasurer in the country. Uh -huh. Lloyd Hara, back in the day, when he was the Seattle City Treasurer, tried to create a public bank for the City of Seattle. And he was stymied by the uh, Federal Reserve, who 
refuse to give them a, a routing number. Something as simple as that. So, uh, Lloyd testified before the House or the Senate Committee on Financial Institutions, Housing, and Insurance, and is in full support of this bill. And you can go to his, see his testimony if you go to my legislative website. Okay. And I've featured his testimony as well in the Senate hearing on my website. And then I featured a separate testimony from another task force member, Daryl Roadhouse, who's also got 40 years of banking experience. Uh, and uh, I think pretty well lays out the um, responses to the treasurer's concerns. Thank you. My question is, what do you think is the best thing we can do to help you get this passed? Thanks for asking that question. This is the call to action here now, right? Because we're down to the finish line. So um, I appreciate that you were handing out that hotline number, but that's not necessarily the best way to get in touch with your legislature because it goes to a bank and um, it may not necessarily get looked at for a while, which is too late for the deadlines we're facing. The best thing to do is, actually, Senator Hargrove represents here, and I noticed that he signed on to the Senate bill. If you can ask him to ask the committee people to exec the bill out of committee, that would be very helpful. Uh, Senator Hargrove has a lot of credibility uh, in the Senate, and I think that his ask may add weight. Uh, my own senator, uh, Margarita Prentice, who was the vice chair of the committee, has asked for it too. So I am about to ask him to exec the bill out of committee. Exec means take executive action on the bill. That means it's moving it out of the committee and into Senate rules for the vote on the floor. Who are we asking? To uh, yes, just call. Uh, Senator Hargrove, but it doesn't hurt to call the committee members as well, uh, although they don't necessarily represent you, so you're not a constituent to them. So it's best to contact your own representatives, including your House members. Uh, I'm going to add one more way. Uh, this evening, I'm going to post on signon.org a petition. This petition will have it go directly to Senator Hargrove. If you can go on, sign on it, Every 24 hours, he's going to get a batch of emails saying, we want you to get to exempt this out of committee. Is that what you're saying? And be sure to thank Senator Hargrove for close funds for the bill, and thank him for helping move the bill off the committee floor. Thank you.